Hey everyone and welcome to Mickey Art. My name is Michelle Edhouse and I have been asked time and time and time and time again what are you using as a torch? Can I use a heat gun or a hairdryer? Ah! Now I have watched lots and lots of videos of different artists using different stuff so I could answer those questions but I thought the easiest way for me to answer this and in a way that I can then refer you back to the video um, is to do a test for you guys and so what I am going to do is test my cute little five dollar shop um, butane torch with the one my husband bought me from the plumbing department um, with the little so, hair dryer. This is the only hair dryer I've ever owned because I never use it. I don't use hair dryers. And my paint stripping heat gun. Now I know some of you have specialized little crafty heat guns and stuff like this, but I don't have one of those. I don't see the point. I have one of these. It has a low speed and a high speed. And neither of those is as fan forced as the hair dryer, but it gets a help heck of a lot hotter than a hairdryer so I'm only going to do three tests the flame torch versus the hairdryer versus the heat gun um, because really this one is the same as this one it does the same job except this one's great on really really big projects uh, because it's a lot bigger Check this out. We can have on full noise. Dun, dun, dun. Or we can have uh, this one. I picked up the wrong one. Oops. This one. Isn't it cute? <laughs> so um I'm going to do three tests, but before I start, um, those of you that are looking at getting one of these from um, from CoinSave or Dollar Store or wherever you're getting it from, I also recommend you get some lighter fluid, some butane torch lighter fuel, gas lighter refiller. No, I'm not recommending this one in particular. Hide the brand name. Um, <laughs> Um, they come with a little squirty thing and then they also in the cap usually have lots of little fittings to fit different torches um, but this one fits this one quite nicely and if you have it on its side it seems to fill up quite nicely and literally all I'm doing is holding that there and it is flowing the gas, liquid gas, into the tanks. And I don't know if you can see, but there is now more liquid. Can you see? No, you can't. There's now more liquid in here. So you can keep refilling this until you drop it in the paint. <laughs> it no longer works. I've done that to three. Um, but hey, they're five dollars. So really, you could you could go out and buy a proper creme brulee, kitchen quality, thirty, fifty, sixty, eighty, a hundred dollar ones. I don't see the point. These things work really well. Um, the other one I do have, which I've just remembered about, is one of these, and this is one of your little gas lighter torch things. And yeah, in a real pinch they'll work, but there's a bit of pressure. Look at the difference between. There's some pressure in behind this one that helps with the popping of the air bubbles. And this is a big floppy flame, which makes it really um, difficult to control. And when you do this, it comes back at you instead of going down the painting and then it heats itself up and it goes cookie cookie and so 
with all of that explained, all the different torches I've tried, let's get to it and let's try the heat gun and the um, hairdryer because I did use this hairdryer on about my first three paintings. If you go back and find number 001, 002 and 003, I was using a, the, the torch and then I got sick of it and went and got myself one of these. So let's put them to the test. Here we are. We have the three video, uh, videos, records that I am going to do. Um, and as you can see, all of these have got extra bits other than just the little hole. So I can't just put a little bit of sellotape over top. I need something a bit bigger. So I'm going to use some contact paper and just um, cut a square for each of them. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it it is good if you can get the the stuff to cut without tearing. Otherwise, it looks really bicky. And once we've got it that way, we just need to work out how much that way. Just go over the, if you're going to cover the label, go over the label on the sides. And then it's just like, has that got name on the back? No, good. Have the side you want to keep up when you do this one. You mean everything to me and run, run, Samson, run. Let's keep that side and that side. So I'm literally just going to peel this off. And lay it down. Try and get some of the ear bubbles out because it just makes it look a little bit flasher because if you then take this off afterwards a it leaves sticky and b it is um it will rip your, your label anyway okay and as if by magic, it was all done. <laughs> right, so those are done. Next thing we need to do is find them something to sit on. And I always keep a selection of oops, tins. Make sure that your sticky is on the underside, otherwise the paint won't sticky to that. And what I've done is I've made, gone around and made sure with my nail or some sort of firm thing that those edges are nicely sealed all the way around. It's not going to matter too much because I've got a special job for these guys and that's all going to be cut out. But anyway, more about that later. Okay, so... What we need to do huh interesting what we need to do is get our colors ready so what colors are we using today we are using phthalo blue burnt sienna and gold So I need a pot for each and what I'm going to do oh, and a little bit of iridescent medium because I can and I'm going to do all three of them the same I'm going to do them exactly the same method and we'll see what happens with the cells okay so um, I'm 
my paint is all mixed up and it is mixed to a consistency that I like. Uh, some of you may go, oh, it's different to how I do it. I must be wrong. Some of you will go, oh, it's different to how I do it. You must be wrong. And uh, some of you go, how do I mix my paint? Go over to my other video, which is linked in the description below. Um, on how to mix paint or ha rather how I mix paint now I'm making these even I dripped some on the outside of that one so I've done it on these as well <laughs> so that oh, that's silicon or it's actually dimethicone which I believe is best um, this one is in the form of a personal lubricant and there's a link to that in the description below too. I finally found it on Amazon. So make sure you get the pink and black container one, not the green one. The green one's not 100% dimethicone. So then all we're going to do is we're just going to stir that silicon through. And then we're going to add our other colours. Uh, going to do some burnt sienna. And some gold. Now all my colours are Reeves Fine Artist Acrylic and I use the Reeves for a couple of reasons. One, it's great quality paint and at a reasonable price. Um, two, I can get it at my local um, store. Uh, it's... And, is shiny <laughs> I have people messaging me saying I use Floatron on water too and mine doesn't come out shiny my question is what paint do you start off with is the paint that you're using actually a matte paint mine is not uh, my question then becomes um you know, what, what mixture of Floetrol and water are you using? Ooh. Oh, that was lucky. Lucky, lucky, lucky. No. Well created. It didn't spill. <laughs> so check out those videos I've got, guys, on how to mix paint. And please remember that the type of paint you use will vary the results you get. Um, you and I could measure out exact amounts of each and get different results. But if we both use the same paint, then we've got a better chance of getting them the same. So I'm just going to go stir like that, stir and stir. And then we're going to do a flip cup. And then I'm going to put a little tiny spiral of my house paint, which is spring, indoor, outdoor, semi-gloss, acrylic from Bunnings. It's the green pot. And... Right, so up until here, I think you'll agree with me, it, we've basically done 
exactly the same thing on all three of them. So any variation from now on comes from what we use as a torch. All right. So let's have a look at the first one. And I am going to Oh, I love it. What a great color combination I chose. Okay. So let's come over here and zoom in a little bit. And you can already see there's a few cells coming up. The paint is slowly spreading out. And it's a warm day here, so we've already got cells coming up. Now, I'm going to use my torch on this one. And what I want you to watch is both the amount of cells that come up, but also the amount that the paint moves. Because that's a huge thing. I'm not touching the flame to the paint. Okay. So now I am going to leave that one on the picture and move over to the next one. Oh, I got more over over thingy of white, so we're gonna there's a variation. Sorry, my fault. When you have a variation of the amount of overflap of white. You'll see the overflap of white, we've got some cell action, pretty cool. Not quite so much in here. So let's do the heat gun next. Um, and these take a little bit of time to heat up, but zoom out. I haven't even got my hand in the picture. Oh, there we go. And that's really hot for me. So I'm just going to hold it right up the top. But you can already see, even from right up here, that we're moving the paint. Just the air movement. Nothing too big, but if I come right down, we've got serious air movement. <laughs> But not much cell action. But what I would like to show you, if I zoom back in, we've got some cracking going on. And that, my dear friends, is because that got too warm. So, the paint didn't like that very much at all. That cracking of the gold, not happy. All right. And also, like, wind blowing dries stuff out. And when you get cracking, one of the biggest reasons you get cracking when you leave your painting, it looks beautiful as you walk away and you come back and it's all cracked, is because the, the top has dried faster than the bottom. And so when paint dries, it shrinks. So the top's dried and um, looking nice, but the, the, the bottom is still thin. And as it dries, it shrinks. And it, to, for it to shrink, it rips apart that top layer. Okay? So that's why you get cracking. And the air blowing, I would say, is probably a big thing for this. All right. And we didn't get a lot of cells. All right. Let's move on. This one's waiting patiently over here. Yeah. That's more like the first one in its flippability. Um, just... Let that expand a little bit. I'm 
what I found is the more you let the paint the, the thinner it is the more likely that the silicon will come up when you heat it okay so let's get our hair dryer out and again I'm just going to go on low At that time we've got some cells come up, okay? I'm going to flick it on, I'm going to go back to the heat gun. Do, 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 do. Zoom out a little bit. And pop it onto high. And give it another go. So on high, it doesn't go any faster fan, but it does get hotter. So let's try that. A bit of bit of movement of the paint. Look at that cracking. That is not a good sign. Okay. If you like cracking, use a heat gun. And let's whack this up to high as well. And again, we've got a bit of cracking happening. Okay, you can see that. So that's blown it all around, and we've got a bit of cracking happening too. Let's pop back over to our first one. And, um, give it another bit of a torch. And then I'm just going to spread them all out. Take them out to, to their rims. Okay. Give it another torching. So we've got cells in there. We've got some prettiness happening. But no cracking. Oh, I say that. Maybe it's the white that's the biggest problem in that cracking. The white is starting to... It's not doing big cracks. Can you see that down there? <laughs> it's separating, but it's not doing the giant crack thing. Whereas this one would do a really good topical um look at this look at I've got a skin on that paint already that is not good this quickly getting a skin like that is just it just makes it unworkable look at this guys okay so if you're getting cracking and you're using a heat gun, you might want to look at another option. Um, where's my glove? Okay. And let's move over to this last one and just take that over to its edges. No skin as such on that one. Oh, that 
Fella Blue's done some interesting stuff. Can you see that? When I get you down, I'll show you that. All right, so let's zoom out and show you all three of them at once. And I, I'm not making any of them right or any of them wrong. I just want to show you the difference. Okay. Personally, I prefer the flame. It does a much different job. The heat gun is definitely not my my idea of fun. That's going back in the garage for stripping paint off the house. And the hairdryer. I got some good results in that first few videos, so which is why I continued. <laughs> um, but when you have a look at that. Hmm. Because it's not just heat that dries the top, guys. The wind blow, blowing will evaporate faster as well. So let's just zoom in and have a close look on all three. That one looks like um, Australia in summer. All right, so I think that's given you information. It's up to you what you choose, but please, please, please follow your awareness. If you start off with the hairdryer and you're not getting the results, honestly, guys, five dollars this cost me from a coin save dollar story type place, and uh. That's five dollars New Zealand, so that's pesos to the you Americans. <laughs> um, anyway, so there you go. There's my feedback. There's my test, and do with it what you will. I adore you guys. Have fun, and I'll see you in another video. Bye bye. All that horrible screeching noise that they do when they pull something to a halt. Come back, come back. I didn't do anything with the leftovers. Look what I've got. Look what I've found. I found some really pretty stuff. What I did was I took one of the tins and just sat it on top of the other one and let it drip in. And then look what's inside the tin. That's pretty. I like that little spiral pour. And look what's inside the other tin. That's pretty too. And then come down and check out my floor. No, my table. Look at those. They're pretty too. So let's get the cabochons rolling, rolling. Let's get rolling. Rolling. Where are the cabochons? Well, bring out the cabochons. It's almost like bring out the dancing girls. Okay. Some of you who are new to my channel are going, what do you mean bring out the cabochons? You're supposed to let it dry and then wait three weeks and cut it and glue it and no. Nah. You grab your cabochon, which is a piece of glass that is flat on one side rounded on the other and you put it onto a piece of poster putty which has got a piece of stick just as a handle leaving the flat side clean polished looking fab darling and then you can just dip it straight into the paint and I'm going in there. And then you get to see straight away what you've got. And I like that, it's very subtle. 
and then move on to the next bit. I like this bit down here. It's kind of a squiggly wiggly wiggly. How's that for a word? Squiggly wiggly wiggly. So we're going to go for another one of those little teardrops. Actually no we're not. Not in there we're not. We're going to go for a round bit as the plane goes overhead. Now I buy my cabochons and the trays that I glue them into on um, on Amazon and there's a link in the description if you want to grab some and have a play too. So we've got the round one on there. And just make sure that all of the flat part is covered in paint. The rest of it you're going to peel off later anyway. But that's pretty. That's interesting. Pretty interesting, baby. Now, what's going on on here? That's huge, and I really like it. And I don't have any ovals left. Which is really annoying. I'm going to go for a square. Scrap it, scrap it. Okay. Now the part I really like it's actually the way that wavy bit happens. Just like that. I like that. I like it a lot. And then I'm just going to swap tins. Saves me having to reposition the camera. Uh, and I'm going, going round and round and round. I'm going round, round, baby, right round. Like a record. Got that bit. which is awesome and then we're going to grab one more when you got paint on your fingers and you're grabbing your cabochons um, it really does pay to um, to clean them <laughs> either on your t-shirt or a cloth or tissue or something Go in and I'm going to get that bit there. Okay. And that one's just so subtle. But gold. And like a gold, a little C. See if we've disturbed any cells. Nothing too pretty in there. Thinking I might do a circle out of that one. The other cool thing about doing it this way, guys, is if you're worried that it's not going to turn out or okay that's fine because even when it's been sitting there a couple of weeks you sit it in water for a little while 
and it will um, because the paint doesn't actually well not this paint anyway maybe if you use glass paint it would but because the paint doesn't adhere to the glass it's only acrylic paint for goodness sakes um, we'll see how that one dries it's quite dark but it's got gold and it's got iridescent medium um, the paint will just float off and you can reuse the cabochon nope all right so there we have it my darlings i'm gonna end now and uh, i'll probably show you those dry in another video or not maybe i'll just post them on instagram once they're dry my target is to start loading the things that i think are saleable into my shop <laughs> in time for the video end like when I post the video obviously this isn't going to happen because these aren't going to be dry in time but I will um, but keep an eye on my shop mickey art forward slash uh, mickey art .co .nz forward slash shop um, I am actually going to close my Etsy shop down for anything other than digital downloads so if you are checking out my stuff it'll be on my website um, and just the digital downloads will be on my Etsy store. So I adore you all and I will see you in another video. Bye bye.